This is one of my favorite tools in GDAL. Not many people know it. I've used it so many times for data management. The tool is a tile index tool. So in the section 1.3.2, we'll learn about this tool called GDAL T index. Let's learn about this tool here. So you take a file or a directory of input files and you'll create a shape file or any vector file with the polygons representing the footprints of each of those files. So now you say, I have all of the styles. I don't know where, which style is where. I have this one artifact here. Where, what tile is this coming from? So I want to know where that is, right? So instead of first creating a mosaic and doing the whole work, we can now create an index to know where these files are. So let's run this tool. The option here is we say GDALT index, create index.shape file from the file list. You can give a list of files or similar to how we had the input file list that we gave, the same file list we can give with, with this flag called opt file. In GDAL, some of these options are inconsistent, be named across different software. So GDAL, you know, GDAL VRT has this input file list. This tool has dash dash opt file. So they're not consistent. Again, this is how the project evolved. People use different flag names. And again, these are so widely used that people are resistant to change. So if you say, I will rename this flag to be consistent and people start complaining because it's running in production for so many places. So again, look at the option documentation, the flags might be named slightly differently. When we do this index, let's just do this first. So I'm gonna run this. And we'll run it with the default option first. So it's a GDALT index, create an index or shape file from this file list. We get an index or shape file. I'm going to take a look at that. So I'm going to have a base map in my QGIS. And now I can load this index or shape file. And you can see I have this bounding box of all the data set. So I can say, okay, my data is over this region and each polygon has the name of the file that it came from. So you can see the each polygon has the name of the file as an attribute. So I can say this one is output 13.jp2. And if I say, okay, my all my node data values were here. So what was the name of the tile that node data value came from? And you can say, okay, this one is output six. If I also want to say, I only want to get tiles for the downtown area or maybe the airport area. So I just want this tile. What is this tile? So I can go and say, okay, this is the tile. And I can just use that tile. So if you have a lot of files, you can just say, I will use this index file to go and select the data. Sometimes when you have a lot of data on your some hard drive, you can just run this and you'll know, oh, this hard drive contains data for France because that's what the index shows. So useful way to get the information. By default, it'll only give you the name of the file, not the path. Sometimes it's useful to know where is the path on your disk. So instead of the default option, I always prefer using this option, dash write absolute path. We'll name it as index two, and we have this write absolute path. Now this index file, instead of just having the name, it has got the full path to the file. And this is useful for me to know where is the file on disk. So this is a way to create kind of a catalog of all the image we have in your computer.